Good morning. I want to welcome you to His Word Lives Ministry. My name is David Guthrie, and I'm thrilled to be with you today. I want to bring a message to you today about Stephen and his reply to the accusations of the, the, the council, the religious council that was falsely accusing him. He was a just man. He, he was faithful, and he was doing good works for the early church. And because of this, they were jealous of him, and they set up false witnesses, it says in chapter 6. And, they, and this, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. These were the things that they were saying about Stephen. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on Stephen, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. They saw something in this man that was different. They saw something in his face as if he was an angel. He must have been radiant. There must have been a certain look about him that the the... Uh, that God showed his presence upon and in Stephen. Now we want to read this message in chapter 7 of Stephen's uh, counsel speech. And God's word says in Acts chapter 7, Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. And he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharan. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall shew thee. God Almighty came to Abraham and told him to get out of this country, and that he was going to show him a new land. Verse 4, Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelled in Sharan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. Listen, God promised Abraham that he would give this land, the promised land, to Abraham, even though Abraham never set a foot into Abraham, this was the promise and the covenant that God made with Abraham that he would make him a land and a people. And actually this was the start of God's chosen people here on earth, uh, Israel, the nation of Israel. Verse 6, And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should be that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. God uh, let uh, Abraham let these people know that they would, they would come into bondage in another land for 400 years and be treated uh, poorly in evil for 400 years. This land is Egypt. <clears throat> and the nation to whom they shall be bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. The nation, Egypt, shall be judged, and after that the nation of Israel will come out from Egypt, and they shall serve God in the promised land. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs, or his children. Now we see here how 
<clears throat> Joseph was sold by the patriarchs or his brothers. And the patriarchs moved with envy. They sold Jacob into e Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of the Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came and dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan a great affliction. And our fathers found no sustenance. <clears throat> the fathers, the leaders of the nation of Israel at that time found no relief from a, fam from a famine. But Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt. He sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph, kindred, was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. Joseph called his father Jacob and his, his, his brothers and their entourage and, and, it, and it, Verse 15, And Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sichem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sichem. <clears throat> Jacob was buried back in a place that Abraham had purchased, back in the promised land. They were, he was, Jacob was carried from Egypt all the way back into the promised land and buried. Verse 17, But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose which knew not Joseph. When the time come for God's promise of Israel, the nation of Israel, to come out of Egypt, another king had come into place. Things had grown and multiplied in Egypt. And that king knew not Joseph, or was not in favor and close with Joseph. The same dwelt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. This evilness included even the killing of the Hebrew children, so that they would not continue to grow as an as a nation. Now we see here where God uses Moses to deliver Israel. In which time Moses was born and was exceedingly fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out for fear of being killed, <clears throat> Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in the words and in the deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. So for 40 years, Moses uh, <clears throat> was being uh, apart and, and, and taken upon the great things of the nation of Egypt. And now he's going and he's visiting his brothers within the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote 
the Egyptian. He killed an Egyptian that was treating a Hebrew evilly and wrong. For he was supposed of his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. He thought that, that they would understand how God through his hand, this is Moses, would deliver the family of Israel out of bondage, but they did not understand. <clears throat> and the next day he shewed himself unto them as they strove, and would have sent them at one again, saying, Sirs, you, you brethren, why do you wrong one to another? And he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? This is one of the Hebrews saying this to Moses. One of these Hebrews that were fighting amongst themselves said to Moses, Who made you a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? And this scared Moses. He was concerned for his life. Then Moses fled. Then fled Moses at this saying. It was a stranger in the land of Midian where he begot two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush, after forty years in Midian and two sons, God still was going to use him to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, and appeared to him in a flaming br a brush, bush. Verse thirty-one. When M Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, and I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings, and am come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. We see here where God in the scripture, starting in verse 7, tells of raising up a prophet. He's talking about Jesus. Moses is talking about Jesus, prophesizing. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount, in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. This is Jesus, an angel of the Lord that was with Moses and gave Moses the oracles or the Ten Commandments to present to the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. Verse 39, To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. The fathers of Israel, the Hebrew nation, would not listen 
to Moses, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. While he was with God, getting the Ten Commandments, they <clears throat> approached Aaron and asked, ask, we don't even know what's happened to Moses. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in their works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star <clears throat> of your god Remphran. They started worshiping these other gods, these Egyptian gods figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, and he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. <clears throat> man had always wanted a place to put God. God don't need a place for man to put him. God a so, uh, uh, dwelling place cannot built, be built by the hands of men, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. <clears throat> Solomon built the temple. Howbeit, the Most High dwelleth not in temples, made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? <clears throat> Hath not my hand made all these things? <clears throat> and we see here, after Stephen is, is giving them this history, and this, this background of, of how their fathers turned from God and Moses and the direction that God was giving them in their their lives, and, and he accuses his accusers now. In verse 51, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now partakers and murderers. Stephen tells them that they persecuted the ones that prophesied about the Holy One coming. And even them, they have persecuted and murdered the just Holy One, Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, they have killed him. <clears throat> Whom have received the law by the disposition of the angels, have not, and have not kept it. Even though they've received the things of God, through, even through the help and disposition of the angels, they have not kept it. <clears throat> Now I want to read this last part. This is the stoning of Stephen. This is the result of standing up before these wicked persecutors and ones that have persecuted God all down through the ages and continue to persecute God and his message out into the world. Even the gospel today. Verse 54 says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into the heaven <clears throat> and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Saul, the one that would persecute the church. Saul, the one that would be converted and saved into a child of God. And his name changed to Paul. And to go on and become one of the greatest evangelists that ever was. <clears throat> and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, and Jesus, I mean, and, and Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, God, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He was dead. Stephen was dead. But to the very end, he was following God's ways. He was even crying out to God to have mercy upon these that had stoned him and asking God to show favor upon them that some of them might be saved, that some of them one day their eyes might be opened and their ears might hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. A Jesus that loved us so much it went to the cross and willingly died. A man that never had sinned died on the cross for, to make it possible for us to, to have the gift of salvation. <clears throat> the gift of being forgiven for our sins. The gift of being able to have a relationship with a pure and a holy God. Because Jesus had taken away our sin problem. If you believe in Jesus today, stop your disbelief. Stop your comments behind the scene. You might say, well, I have no problem with God. I have no problem with the church. You're either for Jesus or you're not for Jesus. You'll, ever, you'll either be with Him in life eternal in heaven or you'll be in hell in torment suffering a terrible eternal death continuously in pain and being reminded that you didn't believe in Jesus. <clears throat> There's always going to be people that think they got it all. They don't need anything. Well, you need forgiveness for your sins. You need forgiveness for your sins that you can truly have the life that your Creator would have you to have. If you don't know Jesus today, I encourage you to get down on your knees and tell Him you believe He is the Son of God. Tell Him that you need Him to forgive you for your sins. <clears throat> the Scriptures tells us that whosoever calleth upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Pray to Him. Talk to Him. Call out to Him. And He'll save you. Thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you. And have a wonderful day is we reflect on the testimony of this man that told the truth about a nation, God's nation, that were stiff-necked and turned their back upon God. But out of this nation, God brought some that believed. 
and has built up his kingdom today to include the Gentile, to include all people, all races. There's only two people, two types of people in God's kingdom. <clears throat> two types of people that God talks about in his Bible. Excuse me. The ones who believe in God and his son Jesus Christ and the ones that don't. Praise God for the message today. I care for you. I tell you this truth. Just like Stephen told the, his truth about things of God. And how God's way of providing a holy nation. A fulfillment to the promise that he gave Abraham. That many people and nations would be saved through the relationship he built and the covenant, the agreement that he gave to Abraham. Praise God. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.